Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Carol Conley from the Christian Civic League, and I have for the opportunity to speak in support of these uh, sports bills, uh, LD 926 and 1401. Uh, just, I had an opportunity to talk to one of Maine's legends recently, uh, who is a pioneer in women's sports, her name's Sandy Thomas. And Sandy is a, a long time, she was a great athlete, a high school basketball player in Bucksport. Uh, in the 60s, when the only opportunity women had was softball and basketball. And she knows how hard women have fought over the years for equity in women's sports. And Sandy is absolutely in support of these bills. And so I asked for her perspective, uh, not just as an athlete and someone who has seen tremendous advances that women have made as a result of Title IX for her uh, and seeing the women that were had tremendous opportunities but also as a coach. Uh, Sandy actually coached at Mich University of Michigan, uh, Indiana University of Pennsylvania, and also took women's uh, national teams to Brazil and Czech Republic. So this is someone that you know, really understands the importance of women's athletics. And so she supports this. She understands some of the things that our last uh, testifier gave in regard to the unfair competition for women. But I think what was really interesting that Sandy pointed out was her fear in regard, not just to women having unfair competition, but how this could affect coaches, especially on the college level uh, that did not think this fair, that did not think this was right and refused to recruit ath male athletes to compete against female athletes. And so um, she's strong. she said that she sees the ramification with the recruiting world and is really worried about coaches that are trying to protect these hard fought advances that women have made. And because, especially on the college level, you have st such a strong emphasis on winning and losing that people could actually lose their careers uh, for not following this trend that we see of allowing males to uh, compete against females. So again, um, as someone that was raised in an athletic home, I'm, I'm the son uh, of a public educator. My dad is a Hall of Fame uh, basketball coach here in Maine. Uh, he got most of his notoriety as coaching boys high school basketball, but at the end of his career, he coached girls basketball and fell in love uh, coaching women's basketball and the in tremendous opportunities and advances that he saw from starting his career in 1958 and ending his career in 2001. So I would just ask of the members of this committee to please pass LD 926 and 1401. Thank you very much. Uh, Representative Hagen, go ahead with your question. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, appreciate it. Uh, you had mentioned uh, uh, Sandy Thomas, who uh, was uh, a, or a legendary college uh, uh, athlete, slash coach slash everything. Uh, are you aware of any main colleges dealing with this issue right now? Yeah, there are. As a matter of fact, I think this uh, one of the great examples of what's going on in Bowdoin College uh, in the last couple of years with their squash program. Uh, there was a, a young uh, person named Lex Horwitz who competed on the women's squash team uh, her first three years and then um, asked to compete with the men. And if you look at Bowdoin's college response to that, it's a, it's a really interesting response. I, I don't think I would consider Bowdoin College a bastion of like right-wing conspiracy or, or a right-wing uh, uh, institution in any way, but they really grappled with this. And if you look on the website of Bowdoin College on how they resolved this issue where to have a transgender uh, student leave the female program and desire to compete with the males, you look on their website and they've actually have three, three categories. You have the women's lacrosse, I mean squash, you have the men's squash, and then on top of the men's, you have the women's men's squash. And if I would encourage the uh, members of this committee to look at that and to see that there are no statistics or anything for Lex. Um, so the, the, the idea that this student was allowed to compete, but you, 
really was not really allowed to truly compete. And so I think this is a complex issue. Uh, Bowdoin handled this in a really unusual way. And for people to say that anybody that's trying to wrestle with this and truly balance the educational opportunities that Representative Babbage has rightly pointed out uh, and that we believe in uh, is doing this from a place of hatred or bigotry uh, is, uh, I think if you look at Bowdoin College, that's clearly not the case. I'm Mike McClellan. I live in Raymond, Maine, which is in Southern Maine, but I'm also the policy director for the Christian Civic League of Maine. And I'm testifying today in support of both uh, LD 1401 and LD 926. Um, and, and I'm just going to kind of sum up. I've given you two testimonies on this. They both kind of go in different directions. One of my testimonies kind of focuses on Title IX and what that was all about. And the other testimony is more about research that I found. I thought it was interesting that the early, the two sponsors and the two other reps that spoke, um, all four of them and two on both sides of the issue, all four of them mentioned the word hate, the hate that they felt in this issue. And when I wrote my testimony, you'll notice on both, I put a bio of who I was because many people will look at me and say, why am I, testi why am I testifying on this issue because of who I, what I look like and who I am? And yet I'm a parent, a father of a daughter, I've coached uh, uh, sports for girls. And I actually have three older sisters. I almost forgot that I have three older sisters. I also have relationships with, relationships with four people who are transgender. So um, part of my testimony is centered on some of the research. And one of the, one of the initial speakers said, all the research shows that experts and medical people agree. And I think you've heard from the people that have spoken so far since that it's not true. There's a lot of research that says that this is a big issue. So I just want to point out in my um, testimony that I posted, I put some video links. If you watch those sports, some have been mentioned, boxing, handball, it just, it's, it shows the unfairness of the situation. Uh, Beth Stelzer spoke, she's with Save Women Sports. I want to point out her website is chock full of information. You have to go to her website and look at all the resources on there if you're seriously going to consider voting on this issue. Um, and I guess finally, uh, I just want to point out that the Christian Civic League really worked this bill hard, uh, as well as the shelter bill that's coming up. And I really felt compelled to tell you that there's a lot of people who aren't testifying for whatever reason, but they're praying for you guys. This is such a cultural issue. This is such an important issue. There are no bad guys. There are no good guys necessarily. It, it, this is just something we have to all deal with. And people in the community are praying for you guys. We support you, Republican, Democrat, for this bill, against this bill. Um, and I'll just close by saying, and one of my two testimonies, I put the story of Esther from the Bible. And if you know the story, I won't tell the whole story. But at the end, she's confronted with the fact that God put her in a position at a certain time. He was going to fix the problem, but he was giving her the chance to be the conduit. And I kind of leave that with you folks, that you are the conduit that is going to resolve these issues. We're praying for you. So God bless you guys. Chairpersons Carney and Harnett, members of the Judiciary Committee, I'm, I am Carol Conley and uh, the Christian Civil League, and I really do appreciate the opportunity to speak in support of 1238. Uh, Hubert Humphrey said, freedom is hammered out on the anvil of discussion, dissent, and debate. Um, I didn't always value that. In another life, I led schools for 18 years in Maine and Massachusetts. I served on the NPA Executive uh, Council. I was president of the Northeast Principal Association for years. I started very young, I had 23 as a building principal and through uh, simultaneous insecurity and overconfidence, developed a very autocratic leadership style. But through life experience and uh, good education, uh, developed a more shared leadership uh, model. And through the prompting of one of my mentors at the University of Maine, Dr. Uh, Gordon Donaldson, at the end of my career, at the back of my, on the back of my door, my principal's office, I had a sign that continually reminded me, uh, are all the ver voices being heard? Today, we're talking about a complex and controversial issue. And I don't believe all the voices are being heard. And by the way, I'm not saying that's any fault of the committee members here. But this is not because of apathy, it's not because of busyness, but it's due to fear and intimidation. 
you even heard that from some of the folks that gave testimony today with much fear and have paid a price. I've talked to scores of individuals who truly desire to advocate for vulnerable women seeking shelter when they know there are so few safe spaces in our state for women who have been battered, debilitated by substance abuse or impoverished. impoverished. Yet these potential advocates are reluctant to speak for fear of being labeled as uncaring or as bigots, and yes, even losing their livelihood. In the past few months, I've spoken medical and mental health professionals who are absolutely convinced that allowing biological males in women's shelters is not in the best interest of vulnerable women who are seeking shelter. We've talked to directors of women's shelters who behind closed doors know this isn't in the best interest of women physically, mentally, or otherwise, but the threat of losing funding and the political pressure to conform is too great. Before we call those unwilling to advocate the day for these women cowards, let's truly examine ourselves. I would bet, even though I'm the director of the Christian Civic League, I probably shouldn't be betting, but I would bet there are members even on this committee who are honestly conflicted about this issue. You wonder yourself, are we really doing what's best in the interest of some of our most vulnerable citizens by insisting that they shower and sleep with the very men for whom they are seeking shelter? I said early in my testimony, this is a complex problem, and I know it is, one that requires wisdom and compassion for all Mainers who are seeking shelter. If you ask me what the solution to this problem is, I tell you I don't know, but there are two things I do know. The answer is not erasing women by ignoring their right to privacy and safety. And number two, we won't find the answer to this complex problem in the absence of healthy debate, which seems to be stifled by fear and intimidation. I ask you to vote uh, to pass. For LD 1283. Thank you. Welcome back, Mr. McClellan. Uh, you know the drill. As soon as you're ready to uh, begin testifying, just go ahead. Hey, well, can you hear me this time? Yes, we can. Great. Well, I am Mike McClellan, Senator of actually uh, Representative Harnett and members of the, legis uh, the Judiciary Committee. Um, boy, it gets hard to say that when you sit here for so long. I really appreciate all the work you guys are doing today. And thank you for the time and thank you for giving me time. Um, so I did give you testimony. Uh, earlier and um, it kind of cements what some other people so far have said today in terms of we know that biological males commit a high amount of percentage of violent crimes and um, we know that women's shelters often have people that are vulnerable and lacking trust and even hiding. So I'll let you read about that. I'll make a couple of other statements and, and then get off quickly. Um, I, as I listen to all the testimony today, I wonder if this word hate has just been worn out. And I say that because it's being used by both sides. It's getting confusing. Um, should we, should we not telling a child to, to do something, is that hate? Telling a child to do something, is that hate? I think um, the, the issues you're facing as a committee are much deeper than this subject matter we've got today. And, and I also wanna to refer to the woman who spoke um, as you came back from break a while ago, who basically said that she wanted to shut down people like myself and others who don't agree with her and that, you know, we should not have the opportunity to speak. We should not have the opportunity to put our legislation in and the legislature should not have the opportunity that they would waste their time on bills that might be of importance to someone like me. So um, I find that very concerning. You know, history and science guide us on issues like this, at least it has, you know, throughout history so far. Um, I wonder if we brought our parents and our grandparents into this conversation, you know, what, what would they say about the things we're talking about today? Um, researching, um, I watched videos and I, I saw that, you know, there's still a lot to be decided. If this is really gonna be the science going forward, um, there's a lot to be decided. I mean, male and female, I understand. Genders is pretty cloudy. I watched probably 20 videos and I could probably give you 20 and, and even more responses to what, how many genders there are and how many kinds. And it, it's very confusing. So to ask someone to just trust that, you know, this is the new science. Um, again, biological male and biological female makes a lot more sense. It's clearer and easier to understand. And it, until there are a lot more discussions probably than what we're doing today, um, I really hope that you will support this bill and the other ones that you've heard so far today, which really talk to a science we all understand. Um, 
in closing, I just want to want to thank you. It was mentioned that today is, or this week, I think, is uh, National Educator Week. My wife is an educator. It's also National Day of Prayer today. And I just want you all to know that during the ceremony at noon, each one of you and every legislator in Maine was, your name was spoken out loud and people prayed for you. Um, thank, people really this, appreciate this, what you're doing. Uh, people know it's, it's tough Mr. stuff. Let him, and I'd let you go beyond the three minutes. I need you to. Okay. But, okay, well, I appreciate it. And thank you for what you're doing. Thank you, Mr. McClellan.